uh, define the function um, 213 is my function. I think there's a, um, there might be a, um, uh, a formatting error. So I'm gonna maybe download this file and see if we can look at this problem uh, better. So give me a second here. Yes, so this here is my function here. Uh, let me try to increase the size here for you all to see. It's kind of blurry, but it'll work out here. So define the function. Um, f of x uh, equals, so I have f of x here. And I'll rewrite this because it's kind of blurry. For x squared plus three here. And I care about, uh, find the intervals for which f of x is increasing. So I want the intervals for which f of x is is increasing here. So I'm going to cancel this. And then it's also saying I have this other image file. Let me download that quickly. And uh, this is asking us, find the points of inflection of y equals 5, uh, y equals f of x. So I also care about the points of inflection of f of x. Okay. So this here is again Kaplan's question, as always. And what we're gonna do is uh, they I don't they this is an incomplete solution here, but basically uh, they had the right logic here. So let me just do this problem here. So it says here I want the intervals for which f of x is increasing, right? So I'm gonna take this take this function here, take f of x. I'm gonna find f prime of x here. So I have f of x equals one over x squared plus three. So let me rewrite that. So this is a two part question. So here's part one. Part two, so I'm going to start with part one here. So I'm going to, I have first, Lee, f of x equals one over x squared plus three. Was it x squared plus three? Or, yeah, x squared plus three. So if I want to find the derivative of this function here, I can rearrange this first to find the derivative, before I find the derivative, right? So I can say here, I can rearrange f of x here to equal, just to uh, help me with my solution here, this would equal x squared plus three to the power of negative one, right? This is exactly the same. I'm just putting it to the negative one to help me, um, so I can use chain rule. And then finally, uh, what I can do here is I can take f prime of x, right? So f prime of x, the derivative of x, of f of x would equal, again, it would equal the neg, I would bring down this negative one here. So I have negative one times x squared plus three, and I would have to lower the, um, lower the exponent by, one here. So negative one becomes negative two times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is simply just two x here, right? Two x. And then this here is the derivative of this function. I can clean this up by saying here, um, this would be simply just uh, negative one times two x. So I have negative two x at the top and it's going to be x squared plus three squared at the bottom, right? So this here is simply the derivative of my function here. So this here is the derivative of this function, which is great. Um, and then I want to find uh, the intervals where, for which f of, uh, f of x is increasing, right? So as you can see here, um, um, it says here the denominator is always positive, and that's correct, right? The denominator here is always positive, that's good. And what it's saying here is, therefore, the slope of the function f of x is positive increasing is when x here is less than zero, right? So this here is correct. So basically, when I want to find intervals of increase, I basically just set this guy here. Um, I basically want a positive value every single time, right? So if I want a positive value for f prime of x, the intervals are going to be increasing here. So as you can see, I can set this to zero, or I can set basically x squared plus 3 squared to zero. Um, and then you would realize that uh, this here is always increasing uh, when it's uh, greater than, greater than, or when it's less than zero, sorry, when it's less than zero here. So this here is, uh, this is the correct solution for number one, uh, for part one here, for part one. Um, and I can, uh, I, I can actually do this for you. So let me just do this for you. So I have x squared plus three squared. I'm going to set this to zero. I can square both sides. I would get x plus three. I, I would just get rid of the x, uh, the squared here. I can simply put um, x squared uh, equals 
negative three. And then if I were to square root this again, I would get an imaginary number here, right? So this here, um, this here would not be would, would not be valid here, but I can solve a negative two x here. I can set this to zero, and then if I divide by both both sides here, x would equal zero, right? So again, this here is a valid solution. This here would not be valid because I would get a square root of a negative number, and this here would be a complex root here. So this I would reject the solution, and I would basically look at the solution. So x equals zero here would be my um, would be my solution. I'm sending this guy to zero um, for f prime of zero. So uh, this here would give me um, give me uh, my answer for this problem. Um, yeah, so I would have uh, I would I would I would have this as my function. Actually, just give me a second. I think I have to actually set f prime of zero. So not setting it to zero, but I'm setting um, f prime to zero because this would actually give me my minimum and maximum points. So this is actually I'm actually setting it to zero. Sorry. So I'm setting f of prime to zero. F prime. So I'm subbing this guy in f prime at zero, sorry. So that's a major difference here. Equals negative, uh, negative two times zero. And then this is simply zero squared plus three squared here. And this would simply equal zero at the top. It doesn't matter what the, what it is at the bottom. I think it, in this case is nine. This here is still equals zero. So in this case, um, f prime of zero is zero. So therefore, if it's less than zero, then it would be increasing here. So therefore, I can say x is less than zero would be, would uh, f of x be increasing? And then finally, for number two, the second part of the question, it's asking me to find the um, the points of inflection, right? So if I'm going, if I'm, let me scroll up for you here. I wanna find the point of inflection. If I wanna find the point of inflection, I have to find the second derivative here. So let me take my first derivative first. So this is simply this guy here. So let me rewrite this as, it's negative two x, uh, time all over x squared plus three squared, right? So let me rewrite that. And that's f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to negative two x divided by x squared plus three squared, right? So I have this f prime of x, and now I want the f double prime, right? I want the second derivative of this function here. So let me, uh, let me write this smaller because I'm gonna get a large thing here. Uh, let's see, f double prime of x would equal, so I'm gonna use my quotient rule. Right? I'm gonna use my quotient rule to find the derivative of, of both the, um, of both the, uh, both the, to both this function here. So if I wanna find, if uh, I'm gonna use the quotient rule, so basically the quotient rule, uh, it states here that I'm basically putting this guy here as f of x, and this here is kind of the g of x, so maybe I would actually use this. I'm going to label this as h prime of x just to be keep my uh, kind of thing constant here. So this would equal, I have first g of x. So I have g of x here. So I have x squared plus 3 squared multiplied by f of x or f prime of x, sorry. By f prime of x, this here is negative 2, right? Negative 2. And then I'm going to minus the derivative of this guy here, right? The derivative of this guy here would be, um, I bring the two down, two down to here. So this would be two times x squared plus three. And then I would have um, times, uh, this here is now one, times the derivative of the inside, which is two x here. I believe that's correct. I'm actually, I might have to use the chain rule here. So sorry about this. I might have to use the chain rule. So I'm gonna have to say, so this is a this is actually a complex question because it's a chain rule within a quotient rule problem. So I would have to say basically, let u equals x squared plus three. So therefore I have, I'm taking du over dx of u squared, right? u squared, which would equal two times u, which is simply just two times uh, two times x squared plus three times the derivative of the inside, which is just two x. So I think actually this is, yeah, this is actually correct actually. So I actually did the derivative correctly. So let me erase this guy. So I'm, ta I'm, I'm taking the derivative here. So again, I have two be x squared plus three and the derivative of the inside would be two x here. 
and then this I'm multiplying it by the uh, negative uh, by f of x here, which is simply um, negative 2x. And th this is all divided by uh, g x g uh, g x squared. So this is simply just uh, x squared plus 3 squared and then squared again here. And basically, I want to set this guy again. This here is my um, this here is my h double prime of x. I'm going to set this guy here to zero. I could simplify this before we do that, but it doesn't really matter. And as you can see here, if I'm setting this to zero, um, this could get again number can't be zero. So I basically, I basically care about this top part here, right? So I'm going to simplify this top part and top part and say I have negative two times x squared plus three squared minus, and then I'm going to have minus two times uh, 2x here is uh, negative 4x times another negative here would be positive 8x. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going I'm to separate this negative first. So I'm going to do, do these guys first here. So negative 2 times x squared plus 3 times this here is negative 4x here. And this here would be negative 2 times... Uh, x squared plus 3 squared minus um, this here would be negative 2 times uh, negative 4 would be positive 8x times squared plus 3. And then if you look at these factors here, I could, again, I can, I can, uh, I can, uh, let's see, I can basically use FOIL and, um, and I can rearrange this to give me a, some sort of quadratic equation, right? So let's see. Uh, I can do that for you as well. So I have negative 2 x squared plus 3 times x squared plus 3 plus 8x times x squared plus 3 here. And then I'm going to have to use FOIL, right? So I have negative 2 times basically this here is x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 3x squared plus 9 plus 8x times x squared plus 3. And again, uh, here I have now negative 2 times this is x to the 4 plus 6x squared plus 9 plus 8x times uh, x squared plus 3. And then finally, I can do this here equals negative 2. I'm basically expanding, um, putting time multiplying the negative 2 inside the bracket. So negative 2 uh, x to the 4 minus 12x squared. Um, uh, and this is negative 18 plus 8, and then I'm going to expand this as well. So I have 8x cubed plus 24x. And then I'm going to basically just group them with like terms, right? I have negative 2x to the power 4, and then I have plus 8x cubed, and then I have minus 12x squared, and then plus 24x minus 18 here. And this here is my quartic function, and I'm sending this to 0, right? this guy is going to equal zero here. So I'm sending all of these guys to zero. Um, so this here would, would just give me negative 18, right? And this here is my solution for this problem here. Um, I'm just setting h at zero. Or sorry, I'm setting, I'm setting this entire function to zero, sorry. Not h at zero, but I'm setting this entire function to zero. So I'm solving for this, uh, this quartic function here. So this, this here is not zero. Sorry, I'm sending this function to zero here. And this here would give us, uh, if, I, if I solved this quartic function here, if I use factor theorem to solve for this quartic function here, you should get x equals one, x equals negative one. And these two would be our correct answers here. So I'm just going to see what they're doing here. So this is multiplying both sides by x squared plus 3 cubed gives, and then you get something like this. But I don't think this here is a cube. This here should have been a squared here because I'm doing the quotient rule. So I don't know if this thing is correct here. Um, let me just um, let me just let me just use the uh, quickly use the factor theorem. Uh, and see if I can solve this problem for you uh, quickly. So I don't have to use factor theorem for the sake of time here. Um, so my first number here is negative 2, it's 8, then it's negative 12, plus 24, 
a negative 18 here. Let's see if I get some sort of solution. Yes, I do. So I get uh, I get two solutions here. I have four solutions, but which uh, two of them um, are real and two of them are complex here. And I'll write down the, the real ones here. So therefore, uh, by factor theorem, I would get here, this is x minus one and x plus three here. And I get two more roots that are complex. So I don't care about these guys here. So which therefore I, I have this here is x equals one and x equals three here. And these two are my inflection points for this problem here. And they wrote x equals one and negative one here. So this here is not the correct solution um, to this problem here. So solution is incorrect. Uh, inflection points are x equals one and x here equals three. So, and then this is, uh, this is solved by using factor theorem on the uh, second derivative of a function. So the solution here is incorrect.